Thank you, Marcel, for the nice introduction. Welcome, Mr. Fries, uh, to the DLD. Uh, we like to talk today about the role of the cable industry in the digital world. Mike Fries is the CEO and chairman of Liberty Global, based in Inglewood, Colorado, and uh, like Marcel said already, the second largest cable company of the world, with an estimated revenues in the last year of 10 billion uh, US dollar, and um, delivering services to 29 million subscribers in 14 countries, especially in Europe. Mike, um, we talked at ELD a lot about the future of communication, but we didn't talk too much about the television and the role of the cable uh, industry. Has the cable industry, in your point of view, a bright future, or is there a lot of challenges or maybe also dangers? Well, first of all, I have to tell you, I feel very at home here <laughs> because uh, I live you in can, Colorado, mountain you can country. Drink beer, no? <laughs> yeah, I may drink that beer. I just landed, but um, um, listen. Obviously, I have one gear. My gear is cable, and I believe in what we do. Um, but I think I believe in it for good reason. Uh, the cable industry is, in many ways, misunderstood. If you look at the last 50 years. The cable industry has completely reinvented itself many times. Uh, it started out as an, a business that simply broadcast 10 video channels. Then those became digital channels and hundreds of digital channels. Um, then we picked up on broadband and voice services. Now 50% of our revenue comes from non-video services. Uh, we're, we're moving forward with new television applications like high definition, and DVRs and video on demand. Uh, and our broadband speeds are as fast as anybody's, faster than everybody. So I think we're right in the center of this, of this ecosystem, uh, enabling a lot of the change and taking advantage of a lot of this change. So I'm, I'm very, very bullish and very you know, excited about uh, the cable industry going forward. TV was for decades, yeah, a little bit also a boring medium because it was a layback medium. How can be television uh, smarter in the future? Well, I mean, television's already getting smarter. Um, in this Very slowly in Europe. Sorry? Very slowly in Europe. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess there's two points here. Point number one is that the vast majority of people continue to watch television on televisions. In America, just for, for example, the average American watches 146 and a half hours of television a month. Uh, by comparison, they watch four and a half hours of internet video. So not to say that internet video isn't substantial, but you know, 98% of the time people are spending watching television is in the living room on a couch like this. And, and so for that reason, I think the industry is healthier than people want to believe. Having said that, I have young children, 13 and 10, they are consuming content on, on different devices, uh, no question about it, but they still love their flat screen and they like to watch TV together often. And our challenge as an industry is to start satisfying some of those other needs. Uh, for, you know, we only have 11 minutes, so I'm gonna jump right into Horizon. <laughs> so we're, you know, you look at our industry, there are three things we do well, and there's three things we don't do well. We have amazingly fast networks. We have large customer bases. So in Germany alone, we have something like 7 million customers now. Uh, and we have good relationships with content providers. When you connect the cable, you're gonna get access to pretty much everything. But there's three things we don't do well. We don't allow you to take that content and move it to other devices. We don't allow you to integrate web, personal, or apps content onto your television set, and our user interface, that thing you scroll with your remote, isn't very good. And, and those are the problems we have as an industry, and we're sorting those out. So we're launching in Germany later this year. We will launch what we call Horizon, which is a new media and entertainment platform that will solve all three of those problems. So first of all, it's a beautiful user interface. It feels more like an iPad than a set-top box. The way, I mean, I, I have to show it to you to prove it to you, but trust me when I say it's an unbelievably beautiful user interface powered by a computer chip. It's essentially a computer in the home. 
Did you did you introduce Horizon already in the Netherlands? Did you have some it's on, in trial? We're, we're trialing it right now okay. with customers. Uh, secondly, it allows you to bring to take that content, manage it, share it, and move it to other devices within your home. It has an online environment, so you can watch the same television on your PC or your iPad. And then thirdly, it brings in other content and applications right to your television. So you could be watching TV, Facebook pops up, uh, everything's contextually relevant, and it, it is essentially the answer to what consumers want. So we're in the position, I believe, to innovate and, and, and get our industry to the next level, hopefully at, at the right pace, so that consumers who want those things are able to get them from us and perhaps from other people too. It's a very competitive business I'm in. You know, Deutsche Telekom has 20% market share of video where they've launched IPTV services. They're doing just fine. I've only got 11% broadband share. So uh, it's a competitive business, but I think our ability to innovate is underestimated, and I think this particular device, Horizon, is going to wow you when we roll it out here. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, European and the German market. You had invested in 2009 3.5 billion euros in Unity Media, and last year 3.17 billion euros to take over Kabel BB, which is a regional uh, um, cable company in the southwest of Germany. Um, why the German market is so interesting for you? Why did you spend so much money in this market? Sure. Well, um, there's lots of reasons. Uh, the first one is it is Europe's largest market. It has an extremely vibrant sort of media and, and television uh, environment. Um, but most importantly, I think, from our perspective, in many ways, the German cable industry was left behind. It was almost lost in time. It's like we opened up the door and we found something that looked 10 years old, which is a good thing, because for us, it means an opportunity to drive new products and innovation. So, for example, um, on our footprint, we have 12 and a half million homes. We only have about 12% penetration of broadband. In Holland, our penetration of broadband is 35%. Uh, we have 39% penetration of digital television. Um, in the, in, in the Holland, it's 55%. In the US, it's 90%. So there's great opportunity to drive new products and services into a market that is very, very, um, has high demand for those services. And the other thing I'd point out is that the, the prices in Germany are the lowest of anywhere we operate. We're in 11 European countries. And our, the revenue we generate out of German households is, is relatively low, meaning it's a, not an expensive product. The, pr the products we sell here are much less expensive than the same products in Switzerland, Belgium, Netherlands, Ireland. And so that's good for consumers. So this is a market where I think we really, it's a win-win. We've got an opportunity to grow. Consumers get the benefit of, of great price value relationships. In Europe still we have 7,000 uh, cable companies. Will we see in the future uh, an more, a more faster consolidation of the market? And will you take part of it? Um, it's inevitable. It's inevitable. 7,000 cable operators compete with 22 telcos. On average, we are 20 times smaller than the average telco. So. Look at Germany. You can do the numbers on Deutsche Telekom's revenue. You can do the numbers on our own revenue. So the cable industry is relatively small and fragmented. It's sort of a David and Goliath, we think, uh, struggle that we try to win whenever possible. So the fact that there are 7,000 cable operators, yes, those will continue to consolidate, mostly the medium and large ones. And it's the right thing. It's the right thing. They're not consolidating you know, for any other reason than to be competitive against much larger incumbents who, quite frankly, don't always play by the rules, often have government ownership and are subsidized by taxpayers. You know, we are the little guy, and I think, you know, that needs to be remembered. Will you conquer new territories? Your footprint is from, from the Netherlands until uh, Romania. Uh, will we see new acquisitions in the year 2012? How well, aggressive I mean, are you? Yeah, the main goal is to try to can get larger in the countries we're in. So we're in 11 European countries. I'd say the first goal is to consolidate in the existing market. So we did a big transaction in Poland last year. We did, of course, the KBW deal in Germany. So in markets where we already operate, 
We want to grow scale. Because being big in a country doesn't just mean we're more competitive against uh, telcos. It also means we can launch new products easier. We're more efficient. We can bring prices down. There's so many benefits to being big. Um, it's hard to be as competitive when you're in one little part of the country and your competitors are everywhere. Vodafone is everywhere. Deutsche Telekom, everywhere. It's, it's, it's more difficult. Mike, Europe uh, is suffering of a deep economic uh, crisis, with the exception of Germany, less the Netherlands, Austria, and Switzerland. How, uh, which is the impact of this crisis for your business? Can you resist this, to this crisis, or are you even as the winner of, a, of this crisis? Well, I don't know if there's winners or losers, but I'll tell you that our business grows right through these cycles. And there's reasons for that. Number one, as I just mentioned, it's inexpensive. Our average revenue out of a home in Germany is 17 euros. Okay, that might seem like a lot of money. In the US, the average home is paying cable operators $120. So we're not an expensive product. We're a, we're a very value-driven product. You can get 32 megabits you know, for, for very low money. And I think from that perspective, it makes it easier to grow when, when things are volatile. Um, that's the primary benefit that we have in times like this. I mean, we've had great growth in Germany this past year. Unity Media is setting records every quarter. Uh, KBW had a great quarter. Um, Ireland, we're in Ireland, which of course is economically challenged. If you read the papers, it's been our fastest growing market, Ireland. So our business has a, the ability, I think, to resist volatility in, in the economy um, and grow right through those cycles. You have also a joint venture in China. You are, you are, you are in business, in the cable business of Chile. Uh, uh, what about the merger markets? Do you have a focus on, on new markets like in other industry, industries or, or your focus is still on, on Europe? Well, um, I've been doing this for 21 years. Uh, 10 years ago, we were in 26 countries. We, 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 had the, we had the opinion 10 years ago that we can be everywhere and we should be everywhere. We were on six continents, but our business was 90% smaller. Today we're in essentially 11 European countries and we're 10 times bigger. So there's something to, about picking the right markets and focusing you know, on where you believe you have the greatest strength. So I would say emerging markets, the general problem in emerging markets for us is we are heavily reliant on rules, regulations, infrastructure investment, content rights, media ownership rules, and the farther you get away from developed markets, the tougher those things become. You know, they don't really want ownership, they don't want foreign ownership in China, they don't want foreign ownership in, Bra in Brazil. You know, so we, it's very difficult to invest billions of dollars in a country that doesn't really want you there. Uh, that's really the driver, and I think Europe for us um, has given, you know, to have scale in Europe, to be the largest in Europe, means that we can bring you know, we can work with regulators in Brussels. We can, you know, bring some leverage to bear with vendors and content providers. Uh, we can launch new products and really be competitive. So it works, Europe works for us. Mike, you did not publish your annual results of 2011, but we could see in the three quarters enormous growth. How was the year of 2011 for Liberty Global? How happy is Sean Malone with your work? Yeah, very happy. I mean, this has been a record year for us, and Germany is a big part of it. Unity Media was 40% of our net ads, our subscriber growth this year, and when you put Unity Media and KBW together, it'll be about 25% of our EBITDA, which will be four and a half billion. So it's a very, very, Germany is a huge part of our growth uh, today and tomorrow, and 2011 was a good year, so we're Open next year. This one's can, as good. Can you, can you continue with this growth rate uh, in 2012, or are you a little bit more skeptical? No, I think we can do the same. The situation is a little no, bit. I think we can do the same. Insecure. Yeah, no, we, feel, we feel good about 2012, just as good. Okay, I'm looking to my screen. We are running a little bit out of time. So, is there any question in the audience uh, for Mike Fries? We have some microphones here. Okay. This gentleman is the first row. Hi. Uh, I had a question about. Uh, content over the internet. So you're selling cable services, and then there's uh, all the content over the internet platforms, Hulu, Netflix. And I sorry I walked in a little late in the talk, I don't know if you addressed that, but if you haven't, how, what's your strategy against the European coming of Netflix, Hulu, and whatever other platforms may be? Yeah, good question, Martin. Um, so I think the, the first point you have to make is Europe is highly fragmented, as you know. 
So whether it's content rights, languages, the role that broadcasters play in these individual markets, Europe is a thousand markets with thousands of channels, hundreds of, 200 languages. So Europe is a very difficult market for, a, for certain over-the-top providers to penetrate and reach scale. Now, having said that, they will certainly come, and, they, and many of them might thrive. Uh, the challenge they face, though, is just what I've described. They face two big challenges. One, content rights that are sliced and diced and very difficult to ascertain, and broadcasters who are already in the game. I mean, there are no broadcasters in Germany or anywhere else, quite frankly, that haven't figured out that they need to be over the top with their own online portals. Our reaction to that is what I was describing before with Horizon. Our reaction to that, since we already have relationships with all the best content providers, since we spend a billion euros a year already on content, that our ability to move consumers off the TV set onto their iPads and PCs through our platforms is much easier and will be, I think, a relevant solution for consumers who don't want to work very hard and who are already paying us. So if I can get you all the content you want that you're already paying for on an iPad or a PC for no extra charge, I think you're going to be happy. So our, our goal is to preempt or be there first with a viable uh, internet-delivered product to multiple devices as part of your subscription to us, to our products, to our platform. But having said that, they, they will arrive and they will, they will try. Some challenges in Europe, though, relative to the US. Thank you very much. Our time is over. Thank you very much, Mike, that you could Europe make it to, to Munich. Thanks a lot, and thank, thank you. you for your attention. And have fun on TLD. Thank you.